It's my pleasure as Vice President and Dean of the Faculty of Medical and Human Sciences to welcome you to the University of Manchester to the, the splendid surroundings of the Whitworth Hall for this graduation ceremony on a typically sunny day in Manchester. <laughs> First of all, many, many congratulations to all of our graduates on the achievements that we're about to celebrate today. And of course, a warm welcome to all of the family and friends you have here today to support you. We know that your family and friends will be at least as proud as we are about the achievements of all of our graduates today. And we know that the graduates will be grateful for the support and encouragement of their family and friends over many years. Join the course of your taxing studies at the University of Manchester, all of those of you who are graduating will have gained skills, experiences and knowledge which will help you find success in future years in both your personal and professional lives. Your achievement in completing your qualifications says a lot about your ability, your commitment and it provides a very strong platform to build your career and achieve your goals. We hope that the balance that you've had to strive for between academic study, other interests, and the fun that a great city like Manchester offers will help you find a good work-life balance as your career and your future unfolds. Importantly, we hope you'll nurture the relationships and friendships you've forged here during your time in Manchester. Manchester really is one of the finest universities worldwide. That is a reflection of our commitment to buildings, infrastructure, and facilities of the highest standards, but fundamentally, it's about outstanding and excellent people. Our students and our staff who've made contributions which have changed the lives of people worldwide over many, many years. Join your studies. You've already contributed to the university, and we hope that you'll continue to do so and stay in touch through our careers advisory service and our Alumni Association, which links you with a community of no less than 250,000 Manchester graduates across the globe. Your Manchester degree and your experience here give you every reason to be positive about the future, not least because of the job prospects it opens up for you. Obtaining your degree is a hugely important milestone and you should relish your success, but I hope that this is the beginning of your journey and your association with Manchester and not the end. We all sincerely hope today will not be your last contact with the university and remember our doors will always be open to you. I'm now going to invite Professor Tony Fremont, the head of Manchester Medical School, to say a few words about your school and your graduation. As the Dean has said, my name's uh, Tony Fremont and I'm Head of Undergraduate Medical Education here at the University. It's my pleasure also uh, to welcome you, the graduates of the uh, University of Manchester and your family and friends to the Whitworth Hall here in the heart of this great university. Our university was founded by the Victorians to celebrate and drive forward the concept of a universal education to stimulate and guide the minds needed at the heart of a technologically driven, progressive society. That the university has the largest number of active Nobel, Nobel laureates of any university in the UK and is ranked in the top 40 universities in the world is evidence that their legacy is still alive and flourishing. Whilst the university can trace its origins back to 1824, medical education in the city first started in 1752, when the newly constructed Manchester Royal Infirmary took its first students. The School of Medicine was officially opened in October 1874 by Thomas Huxley, one of the great exponents of Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection. And in 1883, the school was granted its charter to award the degrees of Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery. Today's graduates are therefore the 130th cohort 
of students to graduate with those degrees from this university. It is a reflection of the tradition of high quality medical education offered here in Manchester that as the number of doctors required by the expanding NHS increased, so Manchester was asked to take more students to the point that we are now the largest medical school in Europe with 2,100 medical students of which some 300 are from countries outside the European Union. In 1973, Manchester Medical School first accepted students from St Andrews University into the clinical years of our programme. So it's great to be able to welcome the teaching staff from St Andrews who are here on the stage with me today and to celebrate today the graduation of 80 St Andrews Manchester students. This is a continuing testimony to the strong links of our partnership between our two great universities. If we gauge the success of educational strategy in terms of employability and the reputation of our young doctors, then recent surveys of graduating and newly graduated doctors show that this is one of the most successful medical schools in the UK. More than 90% of our students entered one of their first three choice foundation programs, and our young doctors are recognized by their foundation supervisors and by themselves as being well prepared for life as an early career doctor. The Francis report into the Midstaffs Hospital has also highlighted the importance of the pioneering educational advances we made in problem-based learning and communication skills teaching that make our graduates recognized around the country for their ability to communicate with patients and their intense respect for the rights of patients and staff. Our integrated approach to learning and assessment is also reflected in our graduates' deep understanding of the conceptual basis of modern medicine. As the Dean has said, gaining these skills is not easy. As our graduates, I'm sure, will testify, Manchester is one of the most intense medical undergraduate programmes in the UK, but it is built on sound educational principles. And those who survive the course, and most do, um, have a head start over all the competition, which at time of medical graduate unemployment is very important. So, we're here today to celebrate the achievements of students who by hard work and sheer determination have graduated from the most arduous and the most relevant medical education program in the UK. They have lived up to the principles that would have been recognized and lauded by our Victorian forefathers and they will take this legacy out into the world. We are extremely proud of their achievements, as I'm sure are you, their relatives and friends. And it therefore seems only fitting that we and you should take this opportunity to applaud them in recognition of their achievements. <laughs> but their achievements are not theirs alone. The position that they have reached today could not have been gained without support. Only as they go out into the world and see doctors who graduated from other schools will they realize the true value of the job that the Manchester Medical School has performed in honing their education and laying the foundations of the doctors they are to become. But that's our job. They owe something much greater and more long lasting to you, their friends and families. Whilst we have set them on the path to becoming the doctors they will become, you have made them the people that they are. I get to speak to many of our students and find out a little of their backgrounds. I know how much they appreciate and understand that you, their families and friends, um, have given them so much. And so I would like to give them the opportunity uh, to show that publicly. So can I ask all our graduates to stand and to wave to all your friends, families and other supporters? Give a big wave. <laughs> there are lots of ways of saying the next sentence, but I'm going to read it out. Uh, one thing that our students are famous for is their forthright and feisty interactions with their medical school. 
the next sentence is even more difficult, without their thoughtful and generous feedback, uh, we would... <laughs> no, seriously, we, we wouldn't have a programme that is envied and emulated around the world. For instance, this year's graduates are the first medical students in the United Kingdom to have been formally given the opportunity and the resources through our iPad project to use modern E and mobile learning. <laughs> if anybody needs a cheap iPad, there's a lot going on eBay. Um, anyway, sorry, where was I? Uh, as part of their integrated clinical education. Working with the Manchester Medical School, they have been in the vanguard of an educational revolution that will change the face of medical education and indeed medical practice across the world. So on a personal note, I'd like to thank our graduates for their contribution they've made to our program and keeping us at the very leading edge of medical schools in the UK. It's not usual, in fact it's actually forbidden, um, in a tailored talk to mention an individual student. But at the risk of whatever the university can throw at me, and I hope when I've explained, I'm going to make an exception this year. There are parts of the world where access to medical care can mean a two-day trek because of the social, economic, and geographical nature of the region. One of our graduates here today, Kansha Sherpa, comes from such a region in Nepal. It has been his life's wish to become a doctor and to return to his community to be the doctor. Sponsorship from a Nepalese charity and the Manchester alumni community has made it possible today for Kancha to realise his dream. So today's ceremony is special because whilst all our graduates will change the face of healthcare, we're celebrating the success of one student who will be taking medical care to parts of the world where up to now there have been no doctors. It is also a great pleasure to welcome two of his local sponsors and the headmaster from his school in Nepal, who are here today to support him. Finally, it's essential we all recognise the support we gain from our peers and colleagues. To ensure the relevance of learning, the clinical years of our programme are delivered in partnership with four NHS university sector trusts. Today, our graduates will graduate with those friends and fellow students with whom they have studied for the last three years. They have requested that the staff from their NHS teaching sectors who have guided them through their clinical years be represented here today at their graduation. They have also asked to be presented to the Vice President by their own hospital dean. And so it is particular pressure to welcome Professor Ray McMahon from the MRI and Professor Mark Pugh from Preston to present our graduates. Vice President, on behalf of the Senate of the University, I pre present to you for the degree of Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery with European Studies with Honours, Clara Doherty. <laughs> Caroline Fitton. Bronte Caroline Torrance. <laughs> and for the degree of Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery with European Studies, Alma Yulia Dimitriou Hatley. <laughs> Hannah Jenkins. Congratulations, Hannah. Layla Jordan Thurston. And for the degree of Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery with Honours and Distinction, Jessica Ball. <laughs> Katrina Dean, also awarded the Outstanding Academic Achievement Award. Thank you. 
and for the degree of Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery with Honours, Mayura Hannes Bintiama Damanhuri. Stefan Krasimirov Atanasov. Helen Mary Cotton. Thomas Stephen Curl Roper. Holly Eadsford. Xiao Rong Jonathan Fu. Felicity Jones. Camilla Andrea Kingsley. Emma Victoria Linton. Hannah Pickford. Edward John Rice. Rebecca Ann Florence Shepherd Hickey. Paul Sterling. Charlotte Olivia Strezelecki. Sophie Louise Tudor Jones. Emma Vicari. Megan Leanne Whitaker. And for the degree of Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery, Ahmed Hariz Abdullah. <laughs> Mariam Albazi. <laughs> Samuel Miles Baskind. Jessica Bell. Elliot Bertram Ralph. Jack Edward Simpson Blake. Laura Elizabeth Bland. Frederick Lana Brigham Chan. Michael Thomas John Britton. Sean Michael Brody. Peter Brona. April Diane Buazon. <laughs> Alice Rose Carr. <laughs> Chun Ho Chan. <laughs> Salim Sean Chowdhury. Chin Hyong Chong. Verena Y. Yu Chu. Grant James Coleman. Robert Andrew Cook. Conrad Chenki. Well 
Johan Marie Davis. Christopher Peter Dixon. Arij El Safin. Daniel Fagredo. Kirsty Julia Foster. Sarah Jean Garthwaite. Robert Stewart Garchor. Kate Marie Goodchild. Hilary Jane Graffy. Hugh Anthony Griffiths. Claire Hawkins. James Barry Heald. Stuart William Holmes. Michael Horsley. Rebecca Catherine Howes. Christopher Paul Humphreys. Prudence May Jarrett. Samuel Elliot Johnson. Michael Johnston. Andrew Johnston. Fatima Jahura. Emily Kay. Hannah Mary Elsbeth Kenworthy. Anas Ayub Khan. Zoha Khan. Sarah Lewis. Laura Mary Rose Maitland. James Nathaniel Marshall. Juliet Marshall. Alison Marie Matthews. Charlotte May. Sarah Louise McAnelly. Stuart McKenna. Hafiza Mohammed Saleh. Elaine Moorsman. Arafat or Ibrahim Mullah. Farak Rayman Naeem. Lam Tien Ngren. 
A Daisy Fiona Neoma Namwara. Shola Odunzi. Edwin Hian Chuan Ong. Thomas Marion Owens. <laughs> Jennifer Catherine Paskins. <laughs> Zainul Abidin Patel. <laughs> Mehul Patel. Zara Patel. Sarah May Patrickson. Jonathan William Penny. Samuel John Phillips. <laughs> Gemma Christina Phillips. <laughs> Naima Punja. <laughs> Raja Esman Farid's Raja Sharif. <laughs> Maida Raza. Kathy Wren. Evie Donna Ricky. Noor Ili Izian Romley. Jessica Catherine Rose. Ian Sampson. <laughs> Tabish Shah. <laughs> Zainab Ali Shirazi. <laughs> Kancha Babu Sherpa. Anthony Simmons. <laughs> Rachel Louise Smith. <laughs> Lucy J. Spurrell. <laughs> Sita Zoe Steed. Penguran Siazwan. Adam Zewi Ting. Leazat Tolio Bikova. Christy Lee Usher. Adil Vania. <laughs> Glenn Lee K. Ling Vetus. <laughs> okay. 
Carl Walsh. Robbie Whitaker. Sarah Whitehorn. Ashley Williams. Eleanor Wood. James Samuel Wood. Emma Jane Woolley. Alicia Lise Young. Vice President, on behalf of the Senate of the University, I present to you for the degree of Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery with Honours, William Nicholas Allen. <laughs> Jessica Ruth Furfield. <laughs> William John Gann. Emily Taylor. <laughs> Laura Alice Ellen Farrington. <laughs> Mitchell Foster. <laughs> Claire Louise Mulqueen. Rachel Olive. And for the degree of Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery, Usman Adam. Anam Ashraf. Elizabeth Berry. Claire Margaret Borland. Bridget Helen Buckley. Matthew Byrne. Hugh Jan Chu. Han Hong Chong. <laughs> Jennifer Eve Cunliffe. <laughs> Ruini Opika Ratnasiri Dasanayaka Arachij. <laughs> Elizabeth Grace Droop. Sam Fairclough. <laughs> Rachel Foster. <laughs> Kira Lynn Hadder. <laughs> Pippa Kate Hagen. <laughs> James Michael Humphreys. Adam Jackson. Christina Kao Chilai. Christina. 
Ergil Cade. Wylin Claudia Coe. Yan Yi Zabada Kwok. Man Ho Kwok. Kai Liao. Ross McKean. Lily Grace Monk. James Winston Moore. Divya Nagarajan. Natasha Su Lin Ng. Elizabeth Jane Norris. <laughs> Deborah Suzanne Parkinson. <laughs> Elsa Susanna Morels Parrot. <laughs> Jitan Patel. Amanda Christina Pedersen. Christine May Ting Poo. Ritu Sinha. Wahid Atoll Hashaf Subari. Richard Alexander Walker. <laughs> Holly Wilson. <laughs> Alison Wanacott. <laughs> Ruth Yates. And for the Diploma in Professional Studies in Nursing, Susan Casey. We now come to a very important part of our ceremony and I would therefore like to ask all those who are now graduates in Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery if they would please stand. We're going to make an affirmation. I'm going to lead our graduates and uh, what I want them to do is when I finish a sentence or part of a sentence to repeat it. Um, and therefore, in the first instance, can you raise your right hands, please? I affirm that I will make the care of my patients my first concern, treat every patient politely and considerately, respect patients' dignity and privacy. Listen to patients and respect their views. Give patients information in a way that they can understand. Respect the right of patients to be fully involved in decisions about their care. Well done, that was a long one. 
Keep my professional knowledge and skills up to date. Recognise the limits of my professional competence. Be honest and trustworthy. Respect and protect confidential information. Make sure my personal beliefs do not prejudice my patient's care. Act quickly to protect my patients from risk. If I believe that I have good reason, I or a colleague may not be fit to practice. Avoid abuse of my position as a doctor. Work with colleagues in the ways that best serve patients' interests. In all these matters, I will never discriminate unfairly against my patients or my colleagues. I will always be prepared to justify my actions to them. And now to seal this, I just want you to say, I so affirm. Thank you and congratulations. Please be seated again. Well, the affirmation is incredibly important in modern medicine and healthcare for the contents that you read out. And I'd, I'd urge you to, to think those through when you have a, a moment of time later on today or when the celebrations are over. They're also important because if nothing else, they prove to your parents and relatives and friends that you are able to listen and repeat things immediately. <laughs> so the five years hasn't been totally wasted. So uh, with all of that in mind, it's been a great occasion. I'd like to once again congratulate all of you who graduated here today on your achievements to date and to wish you success and happiness in your future lives and careers. Many congratulations. I now declare this ceremony formally closed and you can begin the real celebrations. Congratulations. Yeah.